and we are live. Okay, so in today we're going to be talking about the Canon 5D Mark IV and more importantly, is upgrading to seed log worthwhile or not? And I want to make sure that I share with you guys my thoughts on how the Canon 5D Mark IV can benefit all of us if we move forward and we, you know, if you already own the camera, you, there's really no reason why you wouldn't uh, want to upgrade to Canon Seed Log. So for all of you who are joining me, thank you very much for taking the time to join me in this weekly wrap up where we're going to be talking about the Canon 5D Mark IV and upgrading to C-Log. And I'm going to go over a couple of other um, what I call myths about the 5D Mark IV because a lot of different things are, are half flown, floating around the internet that are, in my opinion, exaggerated. So they're not really as horrible as, as some people might say that they are, um, at least from my perspective, and that's as a user, as someone who owns the camera, as you guys can see here. So the number one reason why the Canon 5D Mark IV, for me, is worth every penny is the image quality on stills, right? That is the main reason why I purchased the Canon 5D Mark IV, it's for stills. The video capabilities of the camera, um, while they might not be impressive when it comes to, say, comparing it with a Sony or comparing it with, um, you know, a formal video camera, it holds its own. The image quality is actually really, really great. Now, the image coming out of the Canon 5D Mark IV for sure is different than what we saw out of the Canon 5D Mark III, and it is, of course, different than what we saw out of the 5D Mark II. All along the way, though, people have found things that they were not in love with about each of those different versions of the camera, right? And for me, one of the things that I really, really, really love about this 5D Mark IV is that new picture profile where it does the fine detail. It actually makes the highlights roll off in a much more pleasing way. And that doesn't just apply to stills, it applies to video because you can shoot in that profile. Now, who cares, I guess, is, is really what it boils down to, right? But give me one second. I just want to make sure that I have my chat up here so that in case anybody has something to say that we actually answer that question. All right, yeah, so this whole live thing, of course, it's always, it's a little interesting. Let's just put it that way. Um, but what I was saying about the picture profile is that it's way more pleasing. It, is it still only 1080? Sure it is. Is it, can you shoot 4K? Of course you can. Can you shoot 4K in a picture profile that gives you the Canon look, the Canon colors, the Canon skin tones? And the answer is yes. Is that compressed MPEG format really as horrible as people say it is? I'm gonna tell you from my experience, I shot on the 1DC, right, before they put 4K in the 5D Mark IV. And the 4K images, because it shot in motion JPEG, were of high enough quality to where if you wanted to make a print, and I'm not talking about an 8x10 or a smaller size than that, 
I'm talking about a poster size print, a large print. The quality of that motion JPEG was phenomenal. It was great. I had more than one client that actually used a still from the motion JPEG to then turn that into banner ads and one of them actually even a billboard to use in their advertising. So going back to the 5D Mark IV, having it shoot in motion JPEG, the 4K, the quality is, in my opinion, it's good if you have good glass. If you use, and, and some people might get pissy about what I'm about to say, but if you use something like broken on lenses, you know, you're going, you're going to get a different level of quality than if you use L-series lenses. This lens that's on this camera, which is the 50 millimeter L, it's a terrific lens. And anything that I shoot in 4K with that lens looks terrific. It's sharp. It's... Um, it has nice contrast. And again, when I shoot in that um, high detail picture profile, the highlights roll off in a really, really pleasant way. So to me, the, putting the right lens in front of the camera is more important than worrying about whether you're shooting in motion JPEG or not, and then what is that going to do for you in post? Because the truth is that if you have a modern computer, and modern by modern I mean something that you've bought in within the last three years, maybe four years. I've had my MacBook Pro, my laptop, it's the 17 inch now for two and a half years, and I can edit motion JPEG without any skipping or any challenges. So there aren't no issues there on my workstation back here, which is the Mac Pro, th that's even, again, it's not relevant. It, it's not something that you actually notice. Now, one of the other, I'm going to call it a myth, but one of the other misleading things that has happened or have been around the internet for a while is the file sizes, right? So if you're shooting in 4K, <laughs> you're going to get much larger file sizes. Just like when I shoot with my RED and I'm shooting in 8K, the file sizes are going to be a lot bigger. Now, why someone would expect that the file sizes of a 1080 camera are going to be comparable to a 4K file size, I, I don't understand. The other thing that I think is worth mentioning is that there are other cameras like the um, AVX100 by Sony, which is a camcorder that shoots at 100 megabits per second in 4K on a one inch sensor. That's what that camera is. That camera has the ability to um, give you what appears to be smaller file sizes, but when you bring them into post and you're trying to, say, raise the um, shadows or raise the midtones and create more separation with the shadows, which is something that is it's fairly common, um, at least for me and, and the stuff that I shoot, the codec breaks. And, and not just it breaks, but it looks horrible. It gets pixelated. You get to see artifacts. Um, you get things like banding. You get heavy, heavy grain. So your options are to shoot with a codec like XAVCS, which is what that camera shoots with, that is for sure smaller. And all it's doing is basically it's skipping every... It does one frame, skips two frames, then it, it records the third frame or the fourth frame. And, and that's how it's able to shrink the file size. So you get kind of smaller file sizes. They're still bigger than 1080 file sizes, 
for sure. The codec is not something that is super friendly and useful, at least in Premiere Pro. You, you get a lot of choppiness and lagging and more artifacting than, than that actually makes you question whether it's working or not working, what you're doing, the treatment that you're applying, because you get to see more artifacts that once you actually export, some of them get cleaned up, some of them get dramatically worse. And that has to do with the codec. So if I get to pick, do I, would I go with a slightly larger file size? Okay, let's, I'm gonna exaggerate. A three times larger file size with Motion JPEG than something from an XAVCS compressed codec, I would rather work with the Motion JPEG file. And that's just because it gives me way more flexibility in post, way more. A lot more, hands down. So let me see here. So yes, um, I just got a, a question from, and if I mess up your name, type it out in the comments and I'll be sure to, uh, to say it correctly. But it said it's Fernie, Fernie, Ma, Fernie My Pad or Fem My Pad, something like that. Yes, the, the uh, high detail picture profile can be used for videos and stills. It's actually developed for stills. So as an example, if you have um, textures in fabrics, it does a really good job at creating nice pleasant contrast with really nice rollouts. So it's, um, it's a really nice, nice profile and something that I really like. And I actually like shooting portraits with it. So if I'm doing like interviews and I'm doing um, my 5D Mark IV, as my C cam, I don't mind using that on people's um, faces because the intricacies and the gradients that you get in people's skin tones is really pleasant. So take that for what it is. I, I'm gonna suggest that everybody experiment on their own. I really do believe though that what the camera can do is only limited by obviously the skill set of the person using the, the camera, but more importantly, the lenses that you put in front of it. And again, some lenses are better than others, and, and that's why they, in theory, that's why they cost more, I guess. But um, if you're doing paid work, you know, should you be compromising on your lenses? That's actually, yeah, I covered that topic in last week's um, weekly wrap-up where I basically said, that even my, I have different tiers of clients. I have some clients that are, you know, my premium clients. I have some that are my slightly less than premium clients. And then I have other clients. They all get the same treatment and they all get the same, the same setups, the same cameras. If I'm shooting something that needs a red camera because of the latitude that the camera offers, that's the camera I bring. Um, I don't, necessarily break it down by how much I'm charging someone because I own the gear. So I'd rather build on my reputation by providing or over providing, especially some of these other people who may today not be in my A tier client list, but they may become my A tier client list. So that's that. So another um, myth about the Canon 5D Mark IV. There was a C-Log profile that was, or like C-Log profile that was released. And you could install it, you could upload it as a custom picture profile. I never did that because while I saw some people getting what I thought were some really nice results from it, I didn't see what I saw when I look at my 1D, 1DC footage. And I also know that trying to trick the camera into, you know, like reducing the contrast and reducing all of these other, the contrast, the sharpness um, of the camera 
so that you can try to retain more information. It really just means more work in post. The 5D Mark IV today, it literally, yes, it does register in the raw format. But the 5D Mark IV, if you put it on just about any picture profile from um, neutral to portrait or to that fine detail, like I said, and you shoot video, there's very little that you, you may want to do to adjust and post, but you're ready to publish. And if you start messing with lowering the contrast all the way down and lowering the saturation all the way down and lowering all these other things, you're really opening yourself up to make a whole lot of mistakes because that is just the nature of it. And I know that there are a lot of people, um, at least a lot of people that I've talked to, some who are enthusiasts, some who are amateurs, some who want to get into the industry, that simply say, well, why don't I just throw on a LUT? And then there I go. That's not how LUTs work. You know, LUTs, you don't throw it on and, and you're done. You throw a LUT on and then you make the adjustments to get the most out of your image. And um, yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I didn't do it. Film Convert is a great program and they have profiles that work with footage coming out of Canon cameras and the 5D Mark IV is one of them. That, in my opinion, is a better option than lowering the contrast, saturation, and so on, and then throwing a LUT on. I'd rather shoot in a neutral picture profile and then use something like Film Convert to then fine tune my image and then end up with something that is more unique and a little bit better. So that's that's my perspective on it and why I didn't jump on this whole like C-Log or we broke the code and, and wrote C-Log that we are now selling so that everybody can put it on their cameras. Again, do I think that some people have gotten some terrific results? Absolutely. The guy that made it, I think... I think that's brilliant that he took the time to work that out. Is it really C-Log? And, and to me, it isn't. But I'm also the person who uses a 4K monitor that is calibrated to Rec. 709, to um, Rec. 2020, 100% of Adobe RGB when I'm working with my footage. And then the larger panel back there, that's an OLED um, monitor that's also calibrated. So when you're looking at footage and you're, and you're making comparisons or people are making comparisons, but they're not really using, like if they're editing 4K, they're not even editing or looking at it on a 4K monitor. I feel like that's misdirection and misinformation for everybody who is actually out there um, considering or formulating opinions about how it is that they should move forward. These are, of course, my opinions. I don't have to be right, and I'm just giving you my perspective on it. I work with a wide variety of cameras on a lot of different commercial and corporate productions, some government, um, and some of them are like full-blown national campaigns, like marketing and advertising campaigns. Others are local or regional advertising and marketing campaigns. And all of what I'm saying matters to all of those people that essentially I work for. So, you know, if your client doesn't care, I'm going to give you an example. And I'm not going to name the individual, but if he ever watches this video, he's going to know exactly who I'm talking about. He basically said when he goes over and shoots a project for a client that said they needed it in 4K, he shoots it with his GH4, shoots it in 1080, and then up the final output file to 4K and hands it to the client. My clients would stop being my client if I did that to them. Um, but there are people who take that approach. I'm just not one of them. You know, if I'm asked for a 4K file, then 
I'm going to use my equipment to make sure that it's what they're expecting because I don't need, you know, three or four or five years down the line for me to not have any kind of solid reputation. This is how I make a living. So I'm not interested in jeopardizing my opportunities or misleading anyone for that matter, which is, again, why it is that I'm going through these different, what I call myths, internet myths about the 5D Mark IV. So let's, I'm going to tell you why it is that I think upgrading, because obviously I bought the camera, right, before they realized that it was a mistake, before Canon realized that it was a mistake to not put C-Log in it, because if you want to stay competitive, you have to be able to offer at the very least what your main competitors are offering. And, and clearly they missed the mark when they went this route and skipped C-Log. So I'm not praising Canon for that. Do I love Canon? Yes. Do I have a lot of Canon gear? Absolutely. I have a whole bunch of Canon lenses and a full set of um, Canon CNE primes and CNE compact zooms. So I'm not talking bad about Canon, but I'm just saying they missed the mark with the 5D Mark IV and not putting C-Log in there. Thank goodness someone somewhere along the line realized it, and now we have the opportunity to upgrade. And I'm going to tell you that the number one reason for me to upgrade is because it's going to save me money. Now, how does that make sense, right? Um, my A-cam right now is the red uh, Epic W, 8K camera, and it is taking an 8K image and bringing it down to uh, 1080 for this broadcast. I'm piping it out via HDSDI into my Apollo, and the Apollo is sending it to the Internet. Nope, that's not true. The Apollo is sending it to the Teradek Cube, which is then sending it to YouTube. So, sorry about that. So what I was saying is, it's going to save me money. Now, how is it exactly that it's going to save me money when I have to pay for the upgrade? Well, one, I get to have C-Log. So C-Log on the 5D Mark IV instantly allows me, with zero effort, to match between my C300 Mark II and now my 5D Mark III. Before that, I had to pick a Rec. 709 color profile on my C300 Mark II to try to match it instantly to the 5D Mark IV. So the fact that I now don't need to dumb down my C300 Mark II and I have an instant match with my 5D Mark IV it's a plus. Now, what the hell am I talking about instantly matching? I'm going to share, I'm going to show this to you guys here. So, you're now looking at a quad view. So, these are all four feeds that I am using with the Apollo switcher. So, it's convergent design Apollo switcher. And I'm taking four different feeds. My ACAM, that's the red Epic W. The wide shot is the C300 Mark II. The close-up of the 5D Mark III is the GH5, so Panasonic Lumix GH5. And then my desktop on my MacBook Pro is the fourth quadrant. But if you look at the top two, right, so my A cam and my B cam, so my close-up of me and the wide shot of me, and you look at the skin tones between, well, my skin tones, and you compare the two, you instantly see a difference, right? That means that post-production <laughs> becomes more critical and more important. If I use the, this setup to shoot 
an interview. And I do a lot of interviews because a lot of my projects are, they, they, I have to have an interview as part of what it is that I'm putting together, especially for commercial work. So not having to sort out, and by the way, both cameras are using the exact same f-stop, so they're both at f2.5. They're both at ISO 800, <laughs> and the, the white balance is set exactly the same on both cameras. So I think I made my point. Very different images that now require some tweaking in post to match the two cameras. Not having to do that saves me time. So paying $100, losing the, one of the 5D Mark IVs for a week or two, three even, and then getting it back where I can have a two camera setup without spending another 12,000, which is what it would be if I was to buy a second C300 Mark II, or wait for the C300 or C200 rather to buy that, and then again, I'd have to dumb down my C300 Mark II and have it shoot in C log three instead of C log two, which is the, the flavor that I happen to like the most because it gives me the most latitude in post and the largest amount of flexibility. So that's the thing. So number one reason, it saves me money. Number two reason, it saves me time. And number three reason, it allows me to rapidly work on a project and turn it around many times in the same day. That means the way that we structure our fees is we have a day rate that typically is whatever the day rate is, is what we go in, we actually shoot. Some projects are one day, other projects are four or five days. So they pay that. And then we have day rates for post-production. If we're doing the post-production, if we're just handing it off, then we just hand it off and that's that. But if we're doing the post-production, then that's also a day rate. If I can do both in one day, in one working day, which is roughly 12, 12 to 14 hours, depending on the project, then my profit just shot up because the client is still going to pay for the day rate for the post-production and the day rate for the actual production. That matters to me. That saves me money, saves me time, makes my life easier, allows me to um, basically put out more content for my clients, do more projects, not just me, but any one of my crew. I can literally send them off with two cameras and say, go to town. And that's, that's kind of cool. We run a very small production company here, right? We have a total of 13 people working for us, and that includes the programmers, the administrative people, and then the production people and the creatives. So, you know, our when we're lucky and we, we have enough budget, we can bring out four people on a shoot, and then that works out really nice. When we're not lucky, we're doing it either on our own or with one other person. That hopefully is going to change here this year because we're in the process of trying to hire a dedicated audio guy that works for us. So someone that I could pay them a salary, they come in, into the shop and they basically handle all of the audio needs for every single one of our projects and then that will make life easier for everyone. But back to the uh, 5D Mark IV. So to me, that that is enough reason. So let's check let's check out what Canon has to say. Supercharger movie making, of course. If we look at this graphic, you can see the different picture style, right? So what we're shooting with now is this blue line. And believe this, believe it or not. That picture profile that was released, calling itself C-Log, 
was still only working with this much latitude because the camera was not physically able to reproduce m the rest of what's missing here in this longer curve in red. So that's what it's going to allow us to do. The native ISO on the 5D Mark IV is going to be 400. How cool is that? <laughs> and, and the reason why I say this is because I've owned, I don't now, but I have at one point, owned the um, Sony A7S. And shooting at that super high ISO, native ISO, if I wanted to shoot an S-Log, was a pain in the ass. No joke. Um, at least to me. And because, again, I primarily work commercial or corporate, most of my shots are they're, they're kind of like this. There is a different ratio on, on my head, on my face, but it's not, it's not deep in shadows. And I'm also not, not lighting it. So, the, yeah, the Sony A7S, as great of a camera as it is, it was not the camera for me and for my projects, given how much work I needed to do in post. And then two, how much I had to sort of overexpose, which is not intuitive, to overexpose so that you could get clean shadows. That's not cool either. For me, it isn't. That's actually something that I'm struggling with on the GH5, but um, th that'll be another topic for another day. So if you guys have not been to the usacanon.com website, they have these videos where they go way into depth about all of the advantages and all of the reasons why it is that you would want to upgrade. Um, I'm going to tell you, again, for me, I'm doing it. No matter what, this, this is absolutely worth it. And Rudy does a great job of explaining all of the features and the benefits of you know, going with C-Log. Now, C-Log, unless I remember this wrong, but I'm positive that some of the autofocus features are not going to be enabled in C-Log because that's something that didn't work on the 1DX. I'm sorry, 1DC. It's like you had to get the focus and then shoot because it wouldn't on the fly adjust the focus. Um, but yeah, I'm excited because July is two weeks away. I'm going to be hopefully first in line to send this in. I've already called them. I asked if I could actually send mine in early and they're like, you have to wait, um, which is fine. I'll wait. But the fact that this is going to, like I said, allow me to use it as a B cam or a companion cam to my C300 is just, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be exactly what it is that I need, at least for my current workflow. And more importantly, if I need to buy another camera, then why wouldn't I just buy another um, 5D Mark IV instead of spend all those extra thousands and thousands and thousands? So, yeah, so Canon Colors, Canon does a hell of a job at baking in colors, right? So there's a comment here that says, wow, the C300 looks way better. What profile are you using? Are you in Rec. 709 or BT2020? I'm in Rec. 709 on the Canon. What's, um, what's a little misleading <laughs> is that my skin is really not that this magenta. <laughs> It, it it isn't. So that's what happens when you pipe out the uh, the LUT and send it to a monitor. That, that's what we're seeing. If I was actually taking this footage and putting it in my computer and then I was doing the editing, I wouldn't be this magenta because I'm I'm not this magenta. I'm I'm more I'm closer to this with more on the the mocha colors than I am red. I'm, I'm, I'm not red. 
<laughs> but um, but yeah, anyway, that's I'm piping out Rec 709 on purpose for this video. And to be able to get, like I said, matching cameras um, with the 5D Mark III, you know, for some of the productions that I work on, where the deliverable is to the web, especially on some of my smaller corporate clients, I might not need a C200. I might be able to do it all with a couple of 5D Mark IVs and my C300 and save myself even more money. Anyway, guys, this is really all I have. If anybody has any other questions that you guys want me to cover, I'd be happy. But I'll be sure to, once I get uh, go through this process, I'll share with you um, what it is that I'm talking about, how these two will match instantly, because I think that that's the biggest selling point as to why to get C-Log. Because the truth of the matter is that this day and age, with the amount of cameras that are out there, and everything from the GH5 to the new um, EVA 1 that Panasonic's going to be putting out, or the new uh, Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, cameras are getting way, way more affordable. Cameras with a lot of features are getting way, way more affordable. So shooting on a DSLR is, is not as critical or crucial as it used to be. And that's those are my two cents. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up because it is time to, uh, to go enjoy the weekend. I think I mentioned this in my last um, in my last weekly wrap up, but we're not open. Our Fridays are our creative days, and I've decided that I'm going to take my creative day to do a weekly wrap up and then hang out here with you guys. And um, hopefully, some of what it is that I say helps someone make a decision, um, or at least fact check me. Right, rent something, try it out, and then make a decision. But again, a lot of the things that people say about the uh, 5D Mark IV and, and how horrible it is, I, I just don't see it. Not me. I mean, I bought it as soon as it came out. And I've been shooting with it since it came out. Um, I took it on a, a large, large corporate project where, that we shot in, um, in Canada. And I also took the GH5. And... The 5D Mark IV um, did everything that I expected it to do, and it did it incredibly well. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, I hope that you guys have a great weekend. I want to thank every single one of you for supporting my channel, for subscribing to my channel, for putting up with these longer rant-type videos. I know some of you... Um, I got a couple of messages. One of them said, I can't believe I sat through the whole thing, uh, which is flattering. So I'm humbled that anyone thinks that what I have to say matters. So I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the next one. And until next time, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media IQ, helping you compete in today's web economy. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.